Well, hello and welcome to our Easter Messy Church here at Lichard Mission. It's great to welcome you today wherever you're joining us from. My name is Adam and this is my friend Colin. Can you say hello, Colin? Hello, Colin. OK, uh, you say hello at home. Hello. <laughs> so glad you could join us today. Now, we're going to be learning about Easter. And I wonder, do you know what Easter is all about? Do you know what Easter is all about, Colin? Uh, coconuts? Coconuts? Yeah, coconuts. Coconut. Do you think Easter is really all about coconuts? Well, today we're going to find out as we learn about the story of Easter together. And along the way, there'll be some songs that you can join in with and some craft that you can do at home. And if you do any of the craft, please send us some pictures of what you make and then we'll be able to show those pictures in our main Easter Sunday service next Sunday, which will be online here on YouTube, which will be very exciting. But before we do anything else, it'd be good to pray together. So I'm going to pray. And if you want to join in at home, then you can just repeat each line after me. So let's pray together. Dear Father God. Thank you for our Easter celebration. Please help us have fun together. Please teach us more about Jesus. Amen. Now our first song is all about Palm Sunday. We'll learn about that a bit later on. It's a song about Jesus riding into town on a donkey and people are waving palm branches. So for this song, we'll need to find something that we can wave along. It could be that you've got a flag somewhere at home that you can wave, or maybe you've got a, a, a scarf, or maybe you've got a face mask. Uh, we've all got face masks at the moment. Find something that you can wave. Colin will give you 10 seconds to find something before we sing. OK, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ready to sing? Grab whatever it is that you're going to wave. And in the chorus of the song, which starts with these words, here comes Jesus riding into town, cloaks and branches, throw them to the ground. Whenever you get to the chorus, let's all wave whatever it is, like the people wave the palm branches when Jesus rode into town. Here comes Jesus riding into town. Oaks and branches throw them to the ground. Praise and glory, everybody sing. Sing Hosanna, Hosanna to the King. Blessed is he who comes our way. He brings a new and brighter day. The poor are saved, the blind can see. The captive souls are dancing free. Yeah, here comes Jesus, riding into town. Cloaks and branches, throw them to the ground. Praise and glory. Everybody sing, sing Hosanna, Hosanna to the King. King of heaven, King on earth, listen to his saving word. Peace and justice, walk with him, let's raise the gates and let him in. Yeah, here comes Jesus, riding into town, cloaks and branches, throw them to the ground. Praise and glory, everybody sing, sing Hosanna, Hosanna to the King. Our lives will never be the same, praise and bless His holy name. And if we cannot sing it out, the rocks themselves will start to shout. Yeah, here comes Jesus, riding into town, cloaks and branches. Here comes Jesus. 
my name is Caroline and I have a question for you today. Do you know what day it is? So I know it's Sunday and I know it's kind of the afternoon, but do you know what Sunday it is? These things might give you a little bit of a clue. Today is Palm Sunday. So our very first craft today at Messy Church is going to be making these handprint palm leaves. But before I show you how to do the, that, I should probably explain to you what Palm Sunday is, right? So Palm Sunday is kind of the start of the Easter story. Jesus has been traveling around with his disciples. He's been performing amazing miracles. He's been teaching people loads of things about God. And now it's time for a, fe the, a festival called Passover, where God's people remembered how he saved them from slavery in Egypt. And Jesus and his disciples are gonna go celebrate this festival in Jerusalem. And as they're walking towards Jerusalem, Jesus says to two of his disciples, can you go ahead? And when you walk ahead of us, you'll find a donkey. And I want you to bring that donkey back. And if someone asks you, what, why are you stealing the donkey? Just say, it's okay, Jesus needs the donkey and they'll let you have it. And the disciples go ahead and sure enough, that's exactly what happens. They find a donkey when the man who owns the donkeys, like, what are you doing with my donkey? They say, Jesus needs it. And so he lets them take the donkey and they bring it back to Jesus. They put some of their cloaks down on top of the donkey to make like a saddle. Jesus then rides the donkey towards Jerusalem. And the people in Jerusalem, they've been hearing rumours that Jesus might be coming to Jerusalem. And so they're getting really excited. And then somebody, somebody spots Jesus coming towards Jerusalem and he's riding on a donkey. And that's when they remember something. They remember that hundreds of years ago, a man called Zachariah had, had a promise from God where God had promised to send his people a new king who would come into Jerusalem, not riding on a war horse like everyone else, but riding on a donkey. And so they get really excited because they already knew that Jesus was really cool and he was really smart and he was really kind. And now they realize that Jesus is this king that God has promised and they're so excited. They start climbing trees to pick palm branches. They throw their cloaks on the floor along with the palm branches to make like a red carpet for Jesus and the donkey to travel on as they come into Jerusalem. And that's exactly what happens. Jesus comes into Jerusalem walking over these palm branches and these cloaks and the crowd is absolutely going wild for Jesus because they're so excited to see him and they start shouting things like Hosanna, praise God, praise this king who comes in the name of God and that's the story of Palm Sunday and it's the very very kind of start of what happens on the week leading up to Easter and the rest of the crafts are, are kind of going to take us through what happens in, over, in the next few days step by step. So let's go ahead and make our Palm Sunday handprint palm branches. Okay, so for this craft, you don't need a PDF, but what you do need is some brown card or some cardboard and some paper, or if you've got some, some green paper like this. And we'll start with the brown card. So for this, we're gonna make like the stalks, if that's the right word, of the palm leaves. So we're gonna chop two strips down here really quickly. And these would be like the base that will stick the leaves to. And the great news is they don't need to be that straight, but they do need to be roughly the same width. So we'll do that and then that'll help us measure. Cool. And these will be the base for our leaves, so we're going to put them up here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our green paper, so like this, and we're going to use our hands to make our leaves. So we'll go like this. And then we'll cut them out and then we'll repeat until we've got the, amount, the number of leaves that we want. So here are lots of hand print leaves that I made earlier. So because the paper I used is wrapping paper, it's all kind of curled up like wrapping paper does. So if yours is like, you could press it under something, but I'm just gonna use it to help with the leaf effect. So next we need our stalk. And if your stalk's like mine, one's thicker than the other, we're gonna use the thick one. And we're gonna take some double-sided sticky tape like this, or some glue if you're using glue. And we're just going to run it down the middle. like that, trying to make sure it all stays inside the stalk. Leaving a little bit at the end that will be kind of like our, ha our handle. Um, and then we're going to take our leaves and one by one we're going to stick them on so that 
the hand that kind of starts roughly in the middle. So we'll go up one side first. We're switching in and out so that our thumbs go different ways. Like this. And then one hand goes at the top. And now we've covered up a lot of the double sized sticky tape at this point. So we're going to take some more and we're going to put it down the middle again for the other side of the leaves to stick onto. I'm going to put another one at the top for the thumb going the other way. And we'll just keep going. Now we're going to take our other stalk, we haven't forgotten about him, and we're going to put double sized sticky tape on this one, or glue if you're using glue again. And this time we're going to go all the way to the bottom because we're sticking the two parts of the stalk down together to make one really big palm leaf. And so then we've got, we've got to find the bottom and line it up with the one underneath and then just press down so that all the other palm leaves get stuck down. And there we are, there's our handprint palm leaf, ready for Palm Sunday. Ah, hello again. It's time for another song and I hope you enjoy doing that craft if you haven't already. Now this next song is about Good Friday which is the day that Jesus died, which may not seem like a very good Friday. And that's why we're going to sing the words that we're going to sing in the chorus of this song. And uh, these are the, the words, how they begin. And I'll go through the actions with you if you, you join in. We're going to sing that it was a bad Friday. It was a mad Friday. It was a sad Friday. But I'm glad today because... Good Friday means I'm all right. It's Good Friday because Jesus died. Should we go through those one more time? It was a bad Friday, a mad Friday, a sad Friday. But I'm glad today because Good Friday means I'm all right. It's Good Friday because Jesus died. I hope you enjoy singing this song. It was a bad Friday, a mad Friday, a sad Friday, but I'm glad today, cause Good Friday means I'm alright. It's Good Friday, cause Jesus died. It was a bad Friday, a mad Friday, a sad Friday, but I'm glad today, cause Good Friday means I'm alright. It's Good Friday, cause Jesus died. It was a bad Friday, a mad Friday, a sad Friday, but I'm glad today, cause Good Friday means I'm alright. It's Good Friday, cause Jesus died for me. The curtain in the temple tore in two. No more, no entry, it's open. Wait us through. It was a bad Friday, a mad Friday, a sad. 
So earlier on, I was talking to you guys about Palm Sunday and I mentioned a group called the Disciples. So I have a question. Do you guys know who the Disciples were? The Disciples were a group of people who followed Jesus and we know 12 of them by name, but there was actually lots more who followed Jesus. And before they met Jesus, they were normal people. They lived normal lives. They had normal jobs. They had normal families. But then when they met Jesus, everything changed. Suddenly they were traveling around to different places. They were having meals with and meeting all of these new people. They were listening to Jesus and learning all of these new cool things about God and his kingdom. And then they got to see all those miracles that Jesus did. Let's just think of some of those. They saw him feed over 5,000 people with just a few loaves and fishes. They saw him give sight to people who were blind. They saw him help people walk who couldn't walk before. They saw him walk on water. They saw him calm the storm and so many more miracles. So just like the people in Jerusalem realized that Jesus was this king who had been sent from God, the disciples realized that too. They saw Jesus do all these things and they knew he couldn't be an ordinary human. They worked out that he was from God, that he was this promised king. And so they start to get really excited. They start to think about all these things that Jesus is going to do and they start to wonder what it's going to look like when Jesus becomes king. They start to think of all of the miracles he'll do, how he'll be a really fair and kind ruler, how maybe he'll even help them get rid of the Roman rule and help them to have their own kind of rulership and Jesus' kingdom will last forever. But then Jesus starts telling them some kind of odd things that they don't really understand. He starts telling them that he's going to die. Well, that, that doesn't make any sense. How can Jesus be a king whose kingdom is going to last forever if he's going to die? On one of these times, Jesus tells them that the son of man, that's him, will be given into the control of some men. They will kill him, but on the third day, he will be raised. And again, the disciples are just so confused because this just doesn't make any sense to them. If Jesus is going to do all of these wonderful things that they think he's going to do, how can any of it happen if he dies? But then if we fast forward a few weeks, what Jesus says is going to happen happens. Jesus is taken into the control of some men when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, and then they sentence him to death. And a few hours later, he's on the cross and he's dying. And a few hours later, he's dead and they take him and they bury him in a tomb. For the disciples, it seemed like all of these dreams, everything was over. It was finished. Jesus was dead. None of it was going to happen. And they're so sad, not just because they've lost their best friend, but because all of these plans, all of these dreams they had have come crashing down around them. They're so confused and they're so sad and they're so scared and they run and they hide because they don't know what to do anymore. But did Jesus say that when he died, that was going to be the end of things? Let's have another look at that Bible verse. Jesus says, the son of man will be given into the control of some men. They will kill him, but on the third day, he will be raised. So three days after Jesus dies, some women go to prepare his body for burial. But when they get there, Jesus isn't there anymore. In fact, there's an angel there who says, why are you looking for Jesus? He's raised just like he told you he would. Jesus had been raised to life again. He had defeated death. And over the next few days, Jesus appears to his disciples and he explains everything to them. You see, when the disciples were dreaming about what Jesus was going to do as king, they were just thinking too small. Jesus wasn't there to be a new earthly ruler. Jesus was there to rescue them from the biggest problem of all. He was there to rescue them from their sins and the punishment their sins deserve. And he wasn't there just to rescue them. He was there to rescue everyone from this, including you and me, because all of us as humans, we have this thing called sin that's a really, really big problem. And it's a problem we can't fix. Sin is when we do things our way instead of God's way. And the Bible tells us that sin deserves to be punished and the punishment for sin is death. And none of us can escape that punishment. So Jesus came to rescue us from it. Jesus came to earth and he lived the perfect life. And then when he died on the cross, that was him taking the punishment for our sins and trading all of our sins with his perfection, with his innocence. 
so that now if we ask for forgiveness, God will forgive our sins. And when he looks on us, he won't see all of the bad things we've done. He won't see all of the times that we've done things our way instead of his way. Instead, he'll see that Jesus has paid the punishment for us. And that's what we celebrate at Easter. We celebrate the fact that Jesus came, that he died, and now our sins can be forgiven and we can be friends with God. And we celebrate the fact that just like Jesus rose again from the dead, that one day we will too, and we'll get to live with Jesus and God forever. So the disciples had just been dreaming a little bit too small when it came to what Jesus had came to earth to do. And instead, Jesus had come for a really big reason as part of God's big rescue plan to save us from our sins because Jesus and God love us so much. So that's what we think about this Easter. And I'm going to hand over to Nina, who's going to teach you a Bible verse to help you remember this in your heads after Messy Church is all finished. Hello everyone, and today we are going to be learning a memory verse. I'll say it and then you say it with me. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. 1 John 4 verse 14. Now you say it with me. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the saviour of the world. 1 John 4 verse 14. Now I'm going to rub out some words. Seen and sent. Now we're going to um, remember without those words. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. 1 John 4 verse 14. Now, well done. We're going to now about some more words. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. 1 John 4 verse 14. Now I'm going to talk about some more. Testify and Saviour. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. 1 John 4 verse 14 Well then, now we're going to do some more words. We have sent, seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. 1 John 4 verse 14. Now I'm going to talk about some more words. Well done, you've been very good. But first, we're going to say that much again. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. 1 John 4 verse 14. Well done. Now I'm going to rub out some more words. 
now I'm going for row three. We have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the saviour of the world. 1 John 4 verse 14. Now I'm going to rub out 1 John 4 verse 14. Now, let's try it. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. 1 John 4 verse 14 Now I'm going to talk about all of it Let's try it We have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. 1 John 4 verse 14 That was amazing! Well done! Bye! Well, thank you, Caroline, and thank you, Nina, for helping us understand a bit more what Easter is all about. Now, before we have some more craft, would you like to sing another song? Would you like to sing another song, Colin? I want coconuts. We're going to have another song. And this song is a song that reminds us that Jesus's friends, his disciples, didn't always understand what he was saying to them when he talked about his death. But... Then one day they saw that he is risen, and so death is not the end. For this song, you'll have to make up your own actions, but every time you hear the word risen, risen, then you can jump as high as you can, or as high as you can without causing injury to yourself or anyone else in the room with you. Okay, when you hear the word risen, jump as high as you can. I hope you enjoy this song. Jesus was alone with his disciples. He told them of the things to come. The Son of Man will die but rise up three days later. They didn't understand him. What did he say? on that the day Jesus he has risen death is not the end Jesus he has risen to the throne he's coming back to reign one day they know Christ to a cross outside the city. They crucified him with two thieves. One asked, Lord, please remember me when in your kingdom all those who trust the Son have eternal life. Risen to the throne, he's 
I hope you enjoyed that song and we're going to do some more craft now. So the last craft we did was about Palm Sunday and we're going to fast forward a couple of days and do you remember why Jesus and his disciples were going to Jerusalem? What big festival they were celebrating? Sorry, Passover. They were celebrating Passover and the big thing at Passover is the Passover meal. So fast forward a few days and Jesus and his disciples are celebrating the Passover meal together and they're having a lovely time and Jesus says he's so happy to be with all of them but then Jesus does something a little bit out of the usual um he takes the bread and he thanks God for the bread and then he breaks the bread and he gives it to his disciples and says that this bread is his body and then he takes the wine and he thanks God for the wine and then he pours out the wine for his disciples and then he tells them that the wine is like his blood and this is all a bit strange, but Jesus was explaining to his disciples what was going to happen to him. You see, just like the bread was broken, Jesus's body was going to be broken. And just like the wine was poured out, his blood was going to be poured out. But Jesus says to them that he's doing this for many. You see, when Jesus, Jesus was telling them that when he dies on the cross, when his body is broken and when his blood is poured out, he's going to be creating a new promise between God and humans, where humans can be God's friends again through Jesus' sacrifice. Thanks to him, our sins are dealt with. He's paid the punishment and now we can be friends with God. So when we celebrate this at church, because Jesus told us to do this often to remember him and remember his sacrifice. So when we're at church and we break the bread and we drink the wine, it's a happy thing because we're thanking Jesus for this sacrifice that means that we can be friends with God. So this is the Last Supper craft that we're going to be making. So it's got Jesus and his disciples, and then we've got the bread and the wine here. And then Jesus is telling his disciples to do this in remembrance of me. So I'll go ahead and show you how to make this. For this craft, you need to head to our website and download and print the PDF, and I'll put the link on the screen now. And once you've downloaded and printed the PDF, it sh you, should, you need to find these two pages and color them in. So this is Jesus with his disciples at the Last Supper. And then this is the table. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this and fold it up and then stick it on here so that it looks 3D. So the very first thing we're going to do is cut this out. OK, so now we've cut out our table. What we're going to do is we need to fold it. So we need to fold it along this line, along this line and then along this line. So the straighter we can make it, the better. So fold it along here. And then we'll fold it again in the middle. Then we're going to fold it again at the bottom. Like that. So these two folds represent where we're going to stick the table to the piece of paper. And this will be our table poking outwards. So we're going to take some double sided sticky tape or some glue, whatever you're using, and we're going to stick it along the top join here. 
and then we're going to stick some more to make sure it actually reaches the ends like there and on the other side too and we're going to make sure it's folded and we're going to stick it so that the table is in line with the line at the top there. So it's the table in front of Jesus and his disciples. And then we're going to do the same at the bottom. We're going to take some double sized sticky tape or glue and we're going to stick it along the bottom. Like, oh, not like that, like this. There we go. And just a little bit more at the end, make sure the whole thing sticks down properly and peel it off. And then we're going to make sure it's nice and folded again so we don't have to struggle with it. And then we're going to fold it like that. And we're, oh, stick it down like that, sorry. And then when we look at the picture, it looks 3D with Jesus and his disciples waiting to have um, the Last Supper with the bread and the wine and then the rest of the table underneath with Jesus saying to the disciples, do this in remembrance of me from Luke chapter 22, verse 19. So that's that craft done. So now that you've finished your Last Supper craft, we are going to move on to see what happens next. So after the Last Supper, Jesus and his disciples, they go to pray. And while Jesus and his disciples are praying, the religious leaders who don't like Jesus very much because they don't agree with what he's teaching, they've gathered up some men and they capture Jesus and they put him on trial. And they haven't really got anything that they can charge Jesus with because Jesus is innocent. So they get people to lie about Jesus. And in the end, they end up charging Jesus with blasphemy. They say that when he's been saying he's the son of God, he's been taking God's name in vain. He's been using God's name in a bad way when he said that. But even though they find Jesus guilty, um, they haven't really got the power to do anything to Jesus. So they take Jesus to the Roman ruler and they say that they want him to kill Jesus. And again, he doesn't really want to. He doesn't see that Jesus has done anything wrong. But while he's questioning Jesus, Jesus just stays kind of silent. He doesn't really answer or defend himself. And this is because Jesus knew that he had to die, so he lets it happen. So the first, so the craft we're making today is a Good Friday clock, which is going to take us step by step into what happens. So the first thing on our clock is that in the evening, Jesus is condemned to death. And that is from Matthew 27 verses 1 to 2. So Jesus is condemned. The Roman official says that Jesus should be crucified. And so they put a crown of thorns on Jesus. They give him a purple robe and they kind of mock him for claiming to be the king of the Jews. And then they take him, they make him carry the really big heavy cross to the place where he's going to die. And then they erect the cross with Jesus on it and Jesus is crucified alongside two other criminals, and that's here. And then as Jesus is dying on the cross, as he's taking the punishment for our sins, God looks down and he sees Jesus, and all he can see is our sin and all of the things we've done to upset God, and God turns away from Jesus, and Jesus cries out, Father, where are you? And the whole earth is plunged into darkness, even though it's like early afternoon. And Jesus, the la last thing he does is he says, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know that they are killing God's son. And then eventually Jesus dies. And as Jesus dies, the earth shakes and the curtain in the temple that separated God's people from God is torn in two because Jesus has bridged the gap by taking the punishment for our sins. But when Jesus has died, his friends take his body and they bury him in a tomb because they think that's the end of the story. So the last thing on our Good Friday clock is that Jesus is buried in the tomb. So we're going to go and make this so that this Good Friday we can keep track of what would be happening in the story and then we'll do another craft to see what happens next. So to start with, I'll show you how to make this Good Friday clock.
Okay, so this craft involves a lot of cutting up and it involves a lot of different materials. So the first thing you need is the PDF again, and you're going to need these two pieces of paper. And you want to colour them in and set them to one side. The next thing you need is a large um, square of cardboard. And we're not going to use this straight away, we're going to focus on these things first. So we're going to put that to one side. And then you're also going to need a split pin. So if you ordered a bonus bag, you should find a couple of split pins in that. But if you didn't have a bonus bag, um, yeah, you need one or you need to find one somewhere. Um, or you could maybe use a paper clip. That also works sometimes. Um, but we're just going to put those to one side first. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut all of these things out. Okay, so here we are with everything cut out. We've got the base of our clock, we've got the hands, we've got the numbers, and we've got the little symbols ready to stick on. I should have said earlier, if you prefer to draw or write your numbers around the clock, then you don't need to cut out the ones provided. It can be a bit fiddly and time consuming, but I liked it, so that's why I did it. But anyway, so the next step is to stick these symbols on in the right places. So we're going to stick them on in this place. So we've got the candle for the first one, which says darkness covers the land. We've got in the evening, Jesus' body is laid in the tomb. And for that one, we've got the little drawing of the tomb. In the early evening, Jesus is condemned to death. And there we've got a picture of the crown of thorns. And then Jesus is crucified is this one, which I need to trim a little bit. But that one goes there. And so we're going to stick all of those on really quickly. Okay, so now all of the symbols are stuck on our clock, we need to join everything together. And the first part is going to be joining the hands on. So we're going to take our split pin and we're going to, where the crosses are, we're going to pierce through like that. You might need a grown-up's help for this just to make sure you don't hurt yourself. We'll do it again here. Just like that, so we get through the paper and then do the same here, right in the middle. Okay, and now we need to join them all up in the right order. So the first one we put on is the hour hand, then the minute hand, and then we join both of these to the clock face, like that. And then put it through and we split the pin so that our hands on our clock can move around like that. Okay, and the next part is joining it all onto the base. So we take our, we can put this to one side, and we're going to take our big piece of cardboard that we had earlier, and we need to find a plate that is bigger than this, probably by about that much. So Here's the plate that I'm going to be using, so we're just going to draw around it, like so, and then once we've cut it out, we're going to stick this in the middle and then put our numbers around the outside, so then we'll have a fully functioning clock. Okay, so here's our finished Good Friday clock. So what you guys can do is you can take some um, wool or something and stick it on the back here so you can hang it up. But what you can do this Easter is on Good Friday, you can use the hands to track everything that happened on Good Friday from the moment Jesus is taken to court and is condemned to death 
to the time when he sacrificed himself on the cross, when the, everything went dark on the earth, and then three days later, uh, when his body is put in the tomb, and then you can remember when you look at the tomb that three days later he rose again, all part of God's big rescue plan. But that's our Good Friday clock finished. So well done on making your Good Friday clock. But the great news is that Easter doesn't end with Good Friday. It doesn't end with Jesus dead in a tomb. Instead, three days later, two of Jesus' friends, both of whom are called Mary, come to prepare his body for death. And when they get there, Jesus isn't there. The Roman, they bury Jesus in this big stone tomb and they've rolled a huge stone in front of it so that no one would be able to get there. And in fact, when Mary and Mary are walking Jesus' tomb, they're wondering how are we even going to get in there because this big stone is in the way. And then as they approach the tomb, they see that the stone isn't in the way. The stone has been rolled away from the entrance to the tomb. And when they go in there, Jesus isn't there, but an angel is. And he says, why are you looking for Jesus here? He's risen just as he told you he would. And they're so excited because they really hoped that Jesus was the son of God, that he was the Messiah, that he was this brand new king that was going to save them all. And when they'd seen him dying, they'd lost that hope. And now he's back from the dead. He's raised from the dead. He's more powerful than death. As they run and they tell all of their friends about it. And that's what we celebrate at Easter. We celebrate that Jesus took our punishment, took the punishment for our sins, that he died on the cross for us, that he loved us so much that he was willing to do that. But we also celebrate that Jesus didn't stay dead, that he rose from the dead and that he lives right now in heaven alongside God. And because Jesus has the power to defeat death, we can live in the certain hope that one day death won't be the end for us either. That one day if we believe in Jesus and if we trust in him, We'll die, but then we'll come back and we'll live with God in heaven. So this is our Easter Sunday craft. And it looks a bit boring from the outside. We've got the tomb with the really big stone in front of it. But then when we roll away the stone, we have the words of the angel that says, he is not here. He has risen from death as he said he would. And that's from Matthew chapter 28, verse 6. So I'll go ahead and show you how to make this Easter Sunday craft. So for this craft, you're going to need to download this page from the PDF and colour it in like this. You're going to need the other split pin if you have a bonus bag or you need to have another split pin if you don't have a bonus bag. And then you need two things of cardboard or brown um, card. So I'm going to use this one, which we used the other half of for the palm leaves and uh, this one as well. So once we've coloured in this, we're just going to quickly trim it so it's just a kind of overly circle shape and it doesn't have to be exact cool and I'm just going to put this to the one side before we put it in the bin later the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of the card we're going to fold it in half like this and then with a pencil we're going to draw out a rough kind of semicircle shape, but not a perfect semicircle. So a bit rough and try and make it really tall as well. So that will be mine. And then we're going to cut this out as well. So because you're cutting over two layers at the same time, it might be a bit difficult. So don't forget to ask a grown up for help if you need it. And then we'll put this ready to go in the bin as well. Now we're going to unfold it and we're going to cut down the fold line so that we have two versions of the same shape. So these will look the same like that. Now we're going to take off this top one and we're going to put it up there so that we don't lose it. And we're going to stick this down inside here. So take some double side sticky tape or some glue and we're just going to stick that down there like that 
And now we're going to take this one and we're going to cut out an opening in the tomb so that we'll be able to read what it says on the inside. So you can try and trace this. I'm just going to attempt to freehand it, see how it goes. Put that there. And now we're going to stick this down along here, but not along here. So just along this top edge. It might be easier if we stick it down here, this double side sticky tape. We want to stay as close to the edge as we can. It doesn't have to be exact, but close to the edge is where we want it to be. Probably easier to do this with glue, but double-sized sticky tape can have a really good hold and it doesn't take long to dry. So that's why I'm using double-sized sticky tape. And now we're going to unpeel it all and stick the other one down. And then very carefully making sure they align, we'll stick these this down. Okay, so now we've got our tomb open and now we need to put the stone in front of it. So you could use this if you haven't got enough, um, another bit of cardboard to use and you could attach it down here and roll it away like this. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is take another piece of cardboard and I'm going to make a circle shape, which is roughly the same shape as this bit of we cut out earlier. So it needs to be a circle, so I'm just going to join it up there. Again, it doesn't have to be an exact circle, it just has to be a rough shape because it was a stone, so it's not going to be a perfect circle. And just cut it out. one side and maybe we'll use that in another craft and now we're going to attach this up here so we're going to take our split pin and we're going to pierce it through up here and remember to ask for a grown-up's help if you can't do this on your own so that you don't hurt yourself because I don't want to stab your finger accidentally this could be a bit difficult because it's cardboard so it might take a couple of goes there we go so that's it in there and then we're going to work out where we want it to be. So, oh, that doesn't work, so I'm going to put it up here. I may have just broken my split pen. just take a little bit longer because it's cardboard which is harder to break through but there we are we did it and then we thread it through again because this time it knows exactly where it's going and we'll do the same here and then we really carefully split the pin so that it's able to wind and unwind And there we go, then we've got our tomb. And then when you approach it, you can roll away the stone and read the message that the angel brought that Jesus was not there, he had risen just like he told his disciples he would. And that is what we celebrate on Easter Sunday. The fact that Jesus didn't just die for our sins, but he rose again and defeated death. And now we can have the hope that one day we will rise again too. And that verse is from Matthew chapter 28, verse six. So that's our Easter Sunday craft finished. 
Well, we've got time for two more songs before the end of Messy Church today. And the first song is a song that you may recognise the tune, even if you don't know the words. We have a king who rides a donkey early in the morning. And the second song is a song called Jesus When You Died. It's a song where we say thank you to Jesus for dying for us on the cross. So I hope you enjoy singing these songs, dancing along, waving your flags or face masks as we remember the Easter story again with these two songs.
sin was paid for now we're free to live the life that we were made for one with god above living as the children we trust in his words knowing you fulfill them thank you jesus thank you It's almost time to say goodbye. Thank you again for joining us for our Easter Messy Church today. We hope you've had a great time. It's been great to have you with us. And remember, if you've been doing the craft from today, please take some pictures and send those to Caroline at the email address on the screen. We'd love to see what you've been up to and what you've been making today. Two exciting things to tell you about before I say goodbye. The first one is our Easter Sunday service next Sunday at 11 o'clock here on YouTube. Everyone is welcome to join us. The service will last about an hour and it'll be suitable for children of all ages as well as adults of all ages. And if you liked the songs from today, you'll like at least one of the songs next Sunday as well. And there'll be another opportunity to learn more about the Easter story. And at the end of the service, we'll be showing all of the craft pictures that we get from today. So if you want to see your Easter craft on the big screen, take a picture, send it to us, and join us next Sunday, 11 o'clock, for our Easter Sunday service. The second exciting thing to tell you about is Superzone. Superzone is our club for children aged 7 to 11. It's now running online on Zoom on Tuesdays from 6 to 7 p.m. And at Superzone, there are Bible stories, there are crafts, there are songs, there are competitions and more. So if that sounds of interest and you're aged 7 to 11, then please head to our website where you can find out more or get in touch with Caroline to ask for more details. Now, before I say goodbye, I'll leave you with the words of a prayer from the Bible. May the God who gives hope fill you with great joy. May you have perfect peace as you trust in him. May the power of the Holy Spirit fill you with hope. And now it is time to say goodbye. No, it's not. Sorry, Colin? Bonus craft. Oh, yes, there is a bonus craft. If you signed up in advance to get the bonus bag for today, there is one more bonus craft that Caroline is going to show you. So I will say goodbye, and so will Colin. Goodbye. But I'll hand over to Caroline, who will show you the bonus craft, and say a full and final goodbye, and thank you again for joining us. Bye. But wait, if you have a bonus bag, you should have a PDF in it and some tissue paper. And you might be wondering, what am I meant to do with this? Well, you have the Stuff Braid bonus craft. And if you don't have a bonus bag, you can still do the bonus craft at home if you have the things to make it. You just need tissue paper and the PDF from the website. But our little bonus craft is just a little reminder about what Easter is all about. So in your bonus bag, you should find this PDF with the cross on it and some tissue paper. So if you didn't have a bonus bag, you can still, you might be able to have these um, things in your house or you, instead of tissue paper, you could just color in some paper in different colors and tear it up. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out the cross and then we're gonna tear up lots of this tissue paper into strips and little chunks. So now that we've got our um, base with the cross cut out. It doesn't have to be exact, as you can see mine is nowhere near exact. And then we've got lots of tissue paper ripped up. And now we're going to fold it along this line so that it roughly lines up there as well. 
like that. And now we're going to take our tissue paper and some glue and we're going to stick it all randomly on this on this side so that when we fold it over we'll be able to see the tissue paper making it look really pretty in the gap where the cross is cut out. So here we are. So now when we check, when we fold this over, we can see that all of the areas where the cross are have been filled up with tissue paper. So now we just need to stick the whole thing down. So we're going to take some double sided sticky tape and we're going to run it along these three edges and then we're going to fold it down and stick the whole thing together and then it'll be done. So it'll be easier if we attach the glue or the double sided sticky tape to this one just because there's less stuff in the way. So we'll go along here. Then along the bottom. And then along the top as well. And then we're going to really carefully fold it over so that everything kind of meets in the right place like that. So this is my finished bonus craft when it's all dried and at the bottom I just wrote a memory verse that we've been learning at Junior Church which says the Father sent the Son to be the saviour of the world reminding me that when Jesus died on the cross he was the saviour of the world and you can decorate yours however you want but it's just a little reminder of everything Jesus achieved when he died on the cross for us. And that's it. That's the last craft of Messy Church. I hope you guys had fun. Please send me pictures so I can see your versions of the craft at home and I'll see you next time. Bye.